This video is about average treatment effect identification. So I have an example here of potential outcomes similar to a previous video where the black cards represent treated potential outcomes and the red cards represent untreated potential outcomes. Um, so again, each pair is one individual. So for example, uh, for this individual, if they're in the universe where they're not treated, their outcome is five. If they're in the, out in the universe where they are treated, their outcome is seven. Um, and we're assuming the stable unit treatment value assumption holds, so those uh, potential outcomes don't depend on anybody else's treatment status, only that one individual's treatment status. So imagine that this particular treatment is something that individuals can choose. And imagine that the cost is extremely low, we'll say zero just to make it simple. So assuming the individuals are fully informed and making rational choices and such, uh, they would, they get to pick which universe to be in, and so of course they'll try to pick the larger value, assuming that higher numbers are better. So for example, the first individual here, they get to choose, do they want to be in the universe where they get four, or do they want to choose the treatment and get ten? Well, they would prefer to have ten than four, so in our universe, the real universe, uh, we'll observe the value 10 for that individual. Similarly, for the second individual, uh, they would choose 7 instead of 5, since 7 is larger. And so in our universe, we'll observe 7 for that individual. For the third individual, they're actually better off without the treatment. So they would choose to have 5 instead of 4. Uh, and similarly, uh, the last one, the treatment actually hurts them a fair bit. They only get one, uh, so they'd rather have four. And so in our universe, we observe their outcome is four. I should note, we also observe the treatment status for each individual, so we know that these two individuals are treated in our universe, and we observe that these two are untreated. Uh, in our universe. Now, if we imagine these are four different types of individuals in a population, each with equal probability, and think about the average treatment effect, uh, we can see the average untreated outcome is four and a half, and the average treated outcome will be uh, 10 plus 7, 17, 21, 22, divided by 4 is 5 and a half. Um, so 5 and a half, 4 and a half, there's a positive 1 average treatment effect. Um, so that's a population value that has a causal meaning, but is not something that we can observe because we only observe the 10 and the 7 here and the 5 and the 4 here. We can't travel to this parallel universe to see the 4 and the 5 or the 4 and the 1. So when we look at the real world in our universe, if we look at um, the observed treated outcome values, we see 10 and 7, the average is 8.5, we look at the average untreated outcome values, we get four and a half. So the four and a half is actually the same as in the population, but the eight and a half is much larger than the five and a half average treated outcome in the population because individuals are allowed to choose whether or not to be treated. So there's this uh, self-selection into treatment for individuals who benefit a lot from the treatment. And uh, I 
guess, self-selection out of treatment for the ones who are hurt by the treatment. And so in this particular example, if we take eight and a half and we subtract four and a half, we can get a positive four for the mean difference between, in our universe, the outcomes for treated individuals and the outcomes for untreated individuals. And that plus four, that's much bigger than the actual population ATE of positive one. So in this case, we can see the mean difference cannot be interpreted with any, uh, cannot be interpreted as the ATE because there's this self-selection that violates the assumption of independence uh, as discussed in the textbook. So instead, if we wanted uh, to be able to estimate the ATE, if we could, if it were feasible to run a randomized experiment where for each individual we got to choose which value to observe, then we could randomize the treatment, and then we can get basically a random sample of the treated potential outcomes and a random sample of the untreated potential outcomes. And in that case, uh, we would be able to at least have an unbiased estimator for the ATE. Obviously, in any particular sample, it could be higher or lower, um, but we wouldn't be systematically biased. Um, and at least if we had a large enough data set, uh, we would be very close to the true ATE. So that is uh, some discussion of when the ATE is not identified, um, in particular due to self-selection, and then how randomization can help identify it.